Melbourne's Westgate Tunnel is a $10 billion mega project, but its most shocking feature isn't its size. It's the 1.5 million cubic meters of toxic soil that brought it to a complete standstill. This discovery deep underground didn't just stop the digging. It triggered a billion dollar legal battle, years of delays, and an environmental crisis that threatened to bury the entire project for good. The grand plan to build massive tunnels and soaring skyways suddenly turned into a hazardous cleanup operation. How did engineers tackle this toxic disaster to build a tunnel that many said was already dead in the ground? To understand why Melbourne would gamble on such a colossal project, you have to look at one single structure, the Westgate Bridge. For decades, this bridge has been the primary lifeline connecting the city's bustling centre with its rapidly growing western suburbs. But this lifeline is stretched to its breaking point. Every day, over 200,000 vehicles crawl across it, making it one of the busiest and most congested roads in the country. The bridge operates at full capacity, meaning a single minor accident can trigger a domino effect of gridlock, paralyzing huge sections of the city for hours. This isn't just an inconvenience, it's a critical vulnerability for a major city. The solution, proposed as a partnership between the Victorian government and the infrastructure company Transurban, was audacious, create an entirely new path, a second river crossing to act as a vital alternative. The plan was to dive underground, building a massive tunnel that would finally take over 9,000 trucks a day off the local streets of the inner west, giving communities back their peace and quiet. But this wasn't just about a tunnel, it was a complete overhaul, involving widening the freeway from eight lanes to 12 and building new bridges and elevated roads to untangle the city's traffic knot once and for all. So with a city on the brink of gridlock, the plan was set. But to solve a problem this big, you don't just need a plan, you need monsters. The stars of this underground show were the two tunnel boring machines, or TBMs, named Bella and Vida. These are the largest TBMs ever used in the Southern Hemisphere, and their statistics are mind-boggling. Each one has a cutting head with a diameter of 15.6 meters, as tall as a five-story building. They are 90 meters long and weigh a staggering 4,000 tons. To spin that massive cutting face through a mix of soft clays, silty earth, and hard basalt rock, each TBM was equipped with an 8,400 kilowatt power system, delivering an incredible 68,291 kilonewton meters of torque. These machines are essentially mobile factories. As the giant cutter head grinds away at the front, the rest of the machine follows, operating 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Inside, a crew of up to 20 people manages everything from navigation to maintenance. Because the tunnels go as deep as 35 meters below the surface and under the water table, some of these workers had to be specially trained in hyperbaric chambers, learning to work in pressurized conditions similar to deep sea divers. As Bella carved the 4-kilometer outbound tunnel and Vida the 2.8-kilometer inbound one, they didn't just leave a hole in the ground. They built the tunnel as they went. Behind the TBM's cutter head, a sophisticated system assembled the tunnel's permanent shell. This shell is made of massive curved pieces of precast concrete called segments. For this project, a dedicated $60 million factory was built in the regional town of Banala, creating hundreds of jobs just to produce the tunnel's skeleton. This facility produced over 28,000 individual segments to line the twin tunnels. In an innovative move, engineers designed these segments to be 2.4 meters long, some of the longest ever used in the world. This smart design meant fewer segments were needed overall, speeding up the process. Getting these pieces from the factory to the construction site was another huge logistical challenge. To avoid clogging roads with endless truck convoys, a new 700-meter rail siding was built, allowing most of the segments to be transported directly by freight train. However, some of the other concrete components for the project were true behemoths. Around 460 pieces, some weighing up to 160 tons, were too big even for the railway. These required special 52-meter-long super-load trucks that crawled along highways at just 25 kilometers per hour in the middle of the night to deliver their cargo. While the TBMs worked their magic underground, an equally impressive feat of engineering was taking shape in the sky. The Westgate Tunnel doesn't just end when it surfaces, 
it connects to a brand new bridge over the Maribyrnong River and a 2.5 kilometer elevated road that soars above Footscray Road, linking directly to the city. To build this sky road, another custom-built giant was brought in. A 116 meter long, 1,200 ton launching gantry crane. This machine worked like a giant zipper, lifting nearly 1,600 precast concrete road segments into place, some weighing up to 100 tons each and stitching them together high above the ground. The design of these new structures is just as impressive as their construction. The new Maribyrnong River Bridge and the tunnel entrances feature stunning architectural elements that honor the area's history. The Northern Tunnel Portal is adorned with a massive, intricate timber net structure that stands 38 meters tall. Comprised of 16 arches, it creates a dramatic gateway spanning all six lanes of traffic. The bridge itself features a unique cladding with a pattern inspired by eel traps and fish scales, a nod to the area's rich Aboriginal heritage and maritime past. Everything was planned with military precision. The engineers had accounted for the geology, the logistics, and the complex construction. But they had not accounted for a hidden enemy, an invisible poison lurking in the very ground they needed to excavate. The plan was to excavate 1.5 million cubic meters of rock and soil, a volume so vast it would be enough to fill the entire Melbourne cricket ground, one of Australia's largest stadiums. But as pre-construction testing began, the project team made a horrifying discovery. The soil, particularly in these former industrial heartlands of Melbourne, was contaminated with PFAS. PFAS are a group of toxic chemicals known as forever chemicals because they don't break down in the environment or the human body. Suddenly, the project's biggest challenge wasn't engineering, it was toxicology. The discovery triggered a crisis that brought the entire project to its knees. There was no existing landfill or facility in the state that was approved or equipped to handle such a massive quantity of PFAS contaminated soil. This created a paralyzing legal and financial standoff. The builders, the government and Transurban entered a bitter dispute over who was responsible for the massive, unforeseen cost of dealing with the toxic earth. While the lawyers argued, the two giant TBMs, Bella and Vida, sat idle for months. The project that was meant to get Melbourne moving had ground to a complete halt and 150 highly skilled tunnelling workers were laid off. An investigation by the Victorian Ombudsman later revealed a troubling story. The report found that the state's Environment Protection Authority, or EPA, was under immense pressure to fix the problem and get the project moving again. To do this, special regulations were drafted, bypassing normal processes and cutting out community consultation and review rights for residents who lived near the three proposed disposal sites. The Ombudsman's report was scathing, stating the EPA failed to properly consider the human rights of these communities, who were terrified about the health impacts of having millions of tons of contaminated soil dumped near their homes. So what was the final bill for this battle against poison and politics? The project's cost exploded. The initial estimate of $5.5 billion spiraled to over $10 billion, with some reports putting the final figure closer to $12 billion. The contaminated soil issue alone was responsible for a staggering $3.3 billion blowout. To end the stalemate and get the machines moving again, a painful deal was struck. Victorian taxpayers had to contribute an extra $1.9 billion. Transurban paid another $2.2 billion and the construction companies had to give up a billion dollars of their own revenue and profit. The project's completion date was pushed back by three years, from 2022 to late 2025. On top of this, the project has faced heavy criticism for the deal that granted Transurban a 10 to 15 year extension on its highly profitable CityLink tolling contract, a move projected to earn the company an extra $37 billion by the year 2045. After years of delays, disputes, and incredible engineering challenges, the Westgate Tunnel is finally nearing completion. It stands as a testament to both modern engineering's power and its vulnerability to the mistakes of the past. Once open, it promises to deliver on its original goal, providing a vital alternative to the Westgate Bridge, slashing travel times by up to 20 minutes and creating a greener, better connected west with 14 kilometers of new walking and cycling paths. It has been a long and troubled journey, a story of giant machines, hidden poisons, and astronomical costs. 
If you were fascinated by this incredible feat of engineering, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to Ultimate Mega Builds for more deep dives into the world's most ambitious mega projects. What do you think about the Westgate Tunnel's troubled journey? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss an update.